There are basically weapons themselves, or weaponry within the samurai ninja, um, break into three categories. You have buki, which is conventional warfare or weapons like swords, spears, bow and arrows, any weapon that's a conventional weapon that you'd see on the field of battle, anything you see a warrior carrying, that is a buki, okay? Then you have what's called kakushi buki, and that's a hidden weapon or a concealed weapon. That'd be like a shuriken, um, you know, a dagger, a, you know, a little switchblade, the shuko, the hand claws, you know what I mean? Like those things that they're hiding but they can still use it as a weapon, that's called kakushi buki. Now you also have what's called ninki. And ninki means ninja tools, and everyone thinks that a ninja tool um, is specific towards weaponry as well. Now you can use ninki as weapons. I want to make sure we're good there. You can, but that their design wasn't meant to be a weapon. An example, I could take a hammer and I can kill you with a hammer, right? I'd beat your ass and kill you with a hammer. But the purpose of a hammer isn't to kill people. The purpose of a hammer is a tool to build and construct things. So Ninki are shinobi tools, like um, some of you guys have already started studying the six tools from the show Ninki and stuff like that. Those are tools and things used for missions. Today we're going to be experimenting with kakushibuki, which are hidden or concealed weapons. Now, um, with shuriken, there are lots of different variations that historians and people who are really into the koru traditions, they can make this extremely complicated as to all these different shuriken have a different name, they all come from a different ryuha, and all that kind of stuff, and all of that is true. Okay, I'm not going to say that they're not saying something has, that has value. Um, you're going to have what's called hira shuriken, and a hira shuriken is a flat shuriken. This, this one here has four points. Hira, H-I-R-A, hira. It doesn't matter whether it has four points, whether it has three points, whether you see some of them that have like eight points all the way around, like a bucket or sprocket or whatever you call it, it doesn't matter. If it's flat like this, if it's a flat disc and you throw it, it is a hira shuriken. I mean, I, I think simplicity is the best for all students in the beginning. We don't need to have all these thousands of terms. The other kind of shuriken is called bull shuriken, and that looks like this. As you guys know, I'm, how many times have you guys said, okay, grab a bow, let's start working on technique. You guys know bow as what, what most people should call it, the Rokushaku bow, the six foot stick. Bow just means stick. We have hanbo, half stick, right? Tanbo means the double stick. So bow shuriken means a stick shuriken. It looks like a stick with a pencil. This is not a primary weapon. A primary weapon is, let's say we have two armies, right? This one could battle, samurai comes over the field, and this one comes over the field. You're not going to see any one person running down the freaking field with a shuriken in their hand. When they have 100 people with swords and spears. It's like ridiculous, okay? So understand that this is not a primary weapon. It is secondary weapon at best. At best, it's a secondary weapon. Its use is for, um, for night raids, they use, so they use it for that, but they primarily use it for a diversion or a distraction. That's what they use it for. A lot of times they'll, they'll wrap it up and light some things on fire like combustibles, and we've seen our videos where we do fire, shuriken, tossing, all that kind of stuff, but then they throw it on top of the castle ceilings or stuff like that, and then they try to burn houses down. But that's what the use of one is for. It's not actually used primarily in combat as a specific or a main weapon to kill. Now, if you look at, let's take this particular shuriken here. Like this is probably the most common shuriken that everyone uses. And this one specifically comes from the Togaku Ryu. This is called a Senban shuriken. And this is what I mean where they all have their own different kinds of names in Ryuha. It's a hero shuriken, guys. But this specific shuriken from the Todakura Ryu, if I was to tell the Pri to stand there, and I'm going to lodge it at him as hard as I can, I'm going to just thunk, stick it right into him, it's going to impale him that much. That is not deep enough to get in any major organ of the body. So to think that the American ninja movies and the Revenge of the Ninja movies where these, this dude that jumps up and goes, ha, ah, and it sticks them and they're like, oh, I'm dying, and they fall over, right? It's a little ridiculous, okay? It is ridiculous. Now, there are shuriken that were made for specific impact, and they were made to penetrate, and that would be one like this. The impact there, I can penetrate that much. Now, that's enough to really do some damn damage. There's no questioning on that one, right? So you can look at them and tell which ones were made to do damage, 
and which ones were actually made to just kind of chuck, 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 and use them as diversions and to evade. The shuriken themselves, like this, they would carry them, and they would keep them flat like this, and they would just be chuck, 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 chuck. And the reason they would do that is we have modern medicine today, so most of us have a tetanus shot and shit like that, right? Back then they didn't have tetanus shots, they ain't modern medicine. So if I was to take these shuriken and I was to piss on them and put feces all over them and all that, leave it out in the sun for a good couple days, and then I wait for the enemy camp to start sleeping, and I sneak in, use my ninja skills, and I start me and a whole group of us, we already got shit infected shuriken, and we just start chucking at people, they're not going to die. And they shit and piss it all over themselves for the next 48 hours, and we know that. We go tell our commander, and then he sends a huge fucking force of people full of spears and swords and bow and arrows, and they go after their yeah, ass after they're shit shitting and pissing all over themselves. Like, that would be a really good idea how that actually works. <clears throat> because if you're going to use stealth, you can't go in there using big weaponry. You know what I mean? You're almost like you've seen the Rambo movies. He goes on the freaking survival knife and then takes out everyone. It's a little bit freaking far-fetched, but the same concept is the same. When you look at small tactical units, they're also using different type of weaponry, usually. Right? So that would be a way that they would actually pull off that particular mission, right? Here, obviously, bow shuriken. This is the Juji shuriken, which is found in the Tomo Ryu. This is the Senban shuriken, uh, which is found in the Togaku Ryu. This is a, actually what a kunai looks in Japan. The kunai that you see in like Norito and stuff like that, that's not really what a real one would look like. That's a real kunai like that, okay? Um, this is a Koga, Koga Gata, like that from the Kogo Ryu. And it goes over all the different shuriken. It was written by Fujita Seiko. And it goes over all the different shuriken and what Ryu, how they're from, and all that kind of stuff, right? And different knives that they could use and all that good stuff. But that's where, and actually how to hide your shuriken within your um, sword and all that good stuff, right? I'm just, not that we're really going to go over books and manuscripts, but I wanted to show you guys kind of what the, the use was in a, in a way. Historical note before we start moving on to different kinds of throwing. The three major ninja texts when it comes to ninjutsu, which is Bonsen Chukai, Ninpaden, and Shoninki, right? Everyone sees those, those are the three major texts in ninjutsu. There is no shuriken in them at all. The Bonsen Chukai is known as the Bible of ninjutsu. And not one time did they even mention a shuriken. Not once. So the movies and the manga and the comics and you know cartoons and all that kind of stuff they make the shuriken out to be this special ninja thing when the reality of it is it was so minuscule in the real idea of historical ninjutsu it's not even mentioned in any of those texts and we know for a fact that all samurai used shuriken most every damn samurai sword school uses them as a way to pull your sword and they'll throw a shuriken to kind of distract and then they'll come in and cut them down. So the, I, the, the, the raw reality of studying historical text is the shuriken is found historically in samurai schools more than you see it in ninja schools. But in the movies and the cartoons and the video games, you see it more of a ninja thing. Now, when you look, some people can't really read Japanese. So I'm going to use the Nimpaden as an example of this, but, but what you see is you'll see stuff like in the Nimpaden written by, in 1560 by Hattori Hanzo, you'll see images like this. And people think things like that are shuriken. They're not. A lot of times when they see something written that looks like a shuriken in, on these scrolls, right? What it is, even things like that. They, they think that it's a shuriken. It, just because it looks like a shuriken, what we think it looks like a shuriken now in the era that we live, it's not a shuriken. Usually those things are like makibishi or what we see as caltrops or something like that. It's like a ball of like metal spikes and they throw them on the ground so someone's running after them will step on their foot. These were warriors that wrote these books. They weren't artists. So they're just kind of writing a diagram just as a, just as a reference so whoever wrote the book understood what it was. What we're going to do is we're going to work on the basic overhead throw. I'm going to have, um, all of us are going to shuffle because I think that when you hear it from different people, it makes it a little bit more sense, okay? Uh, we're going to work with you guys on throwing uh, the shuriken. The senban shuriken, or the, I'm sorry, the hira shuriken, are going to be the easiest ones to throw. This is the easiest one, okay? The bow shuriken are the harder ones to throw, but 
Um, I do want to make sure that we practice the most with bow shuriken, okay? okay. Now, um, the throw that we're going to work on right now is we're going to call it, for the sake of keeping everything very generic, I'm just going to call it tate nage, or a vertical throw. You guys are going to be standing up, you're going to have the shuriken overhead, like what you guys see is like doko no komai, right? And you're going to step forward and execute the throw. Now, there are things that I think are very important that you guys need to know when it comes to throwing, okay? You might want to pull the camera up a bit for me. Um, when you guys are throwing an actual shuriken, um, this is a projectile weapon. I don't give a shit where you're from, what era we live in. All weapons, even in the modern day, are broken into four categories. There's a fifth for exotic weapons, okay? There is that. But all weapons really break down into four categories, okay? You're going to have bludgeoning weapons, which we would call sticks, right? Like a bow, a hanbo, a baseball bat, a baton. You're gonna have something where you can just beat the shit out of someone. It doesn't matter how classical it looks or how modern it looks. It's a bludgeoning weapon. You pick it up and you beat someone with it. The second category is gonna be a blade. It could look like a traditional katana or it could look like something that's a K-bar. It ain't gonna matter. It's a blade that you're gutting someone with. Okay, so you need to know how to use a blade. The third one that you guys are going to have is a flexible. And that flexible could be a chain, it could be a rope, it could be a belt, it could be a whole lot of different things that people use to tie people up, restrain people. Hell, in the modern day, it could be handcuffs. That is a flexible that moves around a lot and you restrain people with them. It's just a much more advanced version of a flexible than a rope, right? The other one you're going to have is a projectile. Caveman threw a rock. Ninja and samurai through this. Now we have bullets. Either way, it's a weapon that will go from my hand in the air to the person that I'm in combat with. So yes, weapons do evolve over time, without question, right? But when it gets down to weapons, you're primarily going to have bludgeoning weapons, bladed weapons, flexibles, and projectiles. Does that make sense? So why are we discussing that now? If you guys was to pick up a gun and shoot a gun, that takes a lot of skill out of things when it comes to throwing a projectile. The bit will hopefully, the barrel is straight, right? And the sight set and all that kind of good stuff, right? You don't really get that with your body. For me to make a good throw, when I throw it, I gotta make sure my whole body is in alignment. I can't sit there and just do this all day long and throw it. It has to, I have to align everything up if I'm gonna throw the thing straight. So when I step, make sure that your big toe, your knee, the front of your hip and shoulder, that should make a straight line. Whenever I go to my target, if I'm here, when I step, I want to make sure if I'm going to throw right here, I'm going to step, I'm going to inhale as I raise the weapon up, and I'm going to put, I'm making a straight line, shoulder, hip, knee, toe. And then as I step into it here, as I snap through and give it force, I exhale and I come through. I want to make sure at this point, now my elbow and my middle finger are pointing at the target that I'm throwing to at the moment that I exhale. You want to make sure that your breathing is at the same way that your body moves. Your body has to be able to move appropriately to do it accurately. Because we don't have a straight barrel with our arm. You know what I mean? And you'll see what you guys are tossing them. If it isn't straight, your, your hand, your, this could be, like if I do this, if I take my foot, let's say I put my toe out a little bit, right? And I still put my hand at the target. Well, what I've done is I've opened myself up. So I'm going to have a natural tendency to want to turn my hand over. Well, if I turn my hand over, trying to overcompensate for my foot being out, it's going to turn the blade out, and I'm not going to be straight on target. So. Yeah.